There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the disadvantages and advantages of using ethanol as a fuel. In this video, we're going to cover something quite related, which is the use of ethanol as a fuel in Australia specifically. I'll read the actual top point. It says, process information from secondary sources to summarize and evaluate the use and success of ethanol as an alternative car fuel. So there's two verbs. It's summarize the verb and evaluate. So summarize just means we have to give a brief description of the use and the success, but evaluate is a lot more in detail. So evaluate means we need to know, understand the current climate in terms of political climate, you know, is the government supporting it, are the people supporting it, uh, we need to know the future, uh, possible future for ethanol and biofuels in Australia, and we also need to know the obstacle and the prospects. Um, so all that is in that verb evaluate. But yeah, we have to look at the use, so how, how much is being used at the moment, and we also have to examine the success. So is it successful or is it not doing too well? I'll start with the first part, so the ethanol use as a fuel in Australia. So at the moment we have relatively low production, so low production of biofuels in Australia, low production of biofuels in Australia, especially compared to um, countries like the US and in Australia, especially like compared to countries like the US and Brazil. Now, the major biofuels generally is any fuel that is derived from something which is considered to be from a living thing, and the major biofuel is ethanol. It's the one we're discussing. So at the moment, there's low production of biofuels, especially compared to the US and Brazil. But uh, the government is actually so the government is supportive, so the government wants to increase uh, production, so wants to increase ethanol production. And that's important because if we can increase our ethanol production, that means we could have a bigger biofuel industry. But at the moment, it's still relatively low. And I'm going to talk about some of the obstacles and some of the prospects and explain why that might be low at the moment and what the potential is for that to increase in the future. So first, I'll talk about some of the obstacles. So if you, someone's watched the last couple of videos, I talk about um, that land usage was a problem for, for these crops because we have to grow so we have to grow grow ethanol crops we can't just drill them like we drill oil we have to actually grow them so we have to have land to grow and that land can be used for other things so land usage for crops is a problem because we also need to have food crops so food crops are things like you know, corn or weeds anything that we usually plant in terms of food production. So if we use this land to grow ethanol crops, that means we have less space for food crops. And Australia has a problem when it comes to food production. We have actually lost food production capacity over the last couple of years because of massive droughts. So what food production capacity is, is the maximum food we can produce has gone down because our farmland has gone down in quality because of drought and, and different things. So there might be a, a problem, you know, it might be a question mark, can we afford to lose more land that we could otherwise use for food to grow ethanol in Australia because we already have a pretty big shortage of, of good land at the moment as it is and the future looks bleak, it looks like it's even going to get worse. That's a question mark. Also water usage for crops um, because we have to grow these crops, we have to use water and there's a a drought. So obviously we have drought in Australia, drought in Australia, and Australia itself is a very dry continent, which means so Australia is also a dry continent. So overall, we don't have that much water to spare. And the question is, can we afford to use water, which we could otherwise use for other things, to grow these crops? So that's another question, another obstacle we have to overcome before we can really increase our biofuel production. Also there in Australia, the, the government has set a 10% ethanol cap. So at the moment, if you go into the petrol station, 
what you'll find is these, I think they're called E10 blends, E10 blends. And what that means is it's 90% petrol, so 90% petrol and 10% ethanol. And the reason why these blends exist at the moment is because if we go above that, we might actually have damage to our engine. So these 90% petrol, 10% ethanol blends are the max we can uh, we have at the moment. And the reason why is because damage to engines. That's why the government has capped it at 10%. All our engines work best on petrol and aren't specialized for ethanol. So if we were to go to a really high blend, which we would have to do if we want to make ethanol a real alter alternative, then we would have to change our engines and, and that might be quite costly and quite inconvenient. So at the moment there's also a cap, which is another reason why there's a question mark. Can we really improve our engines or change all our engines to make it suitable for ethanol in the future? That's another question mark. And obviously the cost. So at the moment with ethanol we have to grow, have to grow it um, and that costs much more than drilling. So we have a higher cost to producing ethanol than we have cost to producing normal petrol. So that cost is again another question mark. Can we lower that cost to make it more viable so more people can use it? Because at the moment it's too expensive. But some of the prospects, so um, at the moment we're using quite a bit of uh, farmable land that we could that we could use for far um, for food instead of using for ethanol. But if we can use, if we can make ethanol from from um, wood waste, such as any woody parts that have cellulose that we don't really need for anything else that we can use to make ethanol, because we can make ethanol from cellulose as well. So that food that wood waste could be used to make ethanol. Also, weeds we could use weeds from areas and use that to make um, ethanol. Weeds are things like, for example, if you have say you have like this random grassy stuff, and then a beautiful flower in the middle. Weeds are the things which are just, they grow around and we don't really want it. Um, it's not nice, beautiful flower, it's just the actual weeds around it. So if we can find some way that we use these weeds and we make out of these weeds that we don't want, we make ethanol, then we can have an alternative source which doesn't take away anything that we want. It doesn't take away our beautiful flower or our food crops either. And also if we can make more ethanol from food wastes, If we have these three different sources compared to the sources we have at the moment, we could make ethanol from biomass, but the biomass itself is not taken away from food or anything else that we, do, we actually want to keep. So this might happen in the future. We don't have much of it at the moment, but it is a good, good chance that technology will improve to make that happen. Also, we want to have crops that benefit the environment. So this is actually a map of Australia. It says high, plant, high plantation potential, moderate plantation potential, and low plantation potential. And it's these dots here. And you can see New South Wales and Australia, uh, New South Wales and Queensland have quite a few of these dots because that means they have high potential. And this talks about a tree that reduces salinity. Salinity refers to high salt levels. So if it's high salinity, uh, then there's high salt levels. And this tree, if you can plant that tree, it would actually improve the environment, it would make it better. There's a benefit to the environment. And we can then use that tree to make, we can then use that tree to make ethanol as well. So that, that kind of tree crop, like that, if we use, if we plant that instead of planting corn, we could benefit the environment. It wouldn't take too much water or anything else. We could benefit the environment and we could use that also to produce ethanol. That could be in the future as well. We don't have that at the moment, but we might make that more in the future. Now, also we have the government support. So the government has a, the green future. So labor at the moment, green future um, thinking. So it wants to be able to have a sustainable and renewable industry and biofuels and ethanol has its place. So the government support means that you have um, subsidies subsidies and subsidies are things like if someone wants to grow something and the government gives them extra money to grow it makes it cheaper for them to grow it that's a, that's a subsidy and the government is at the moment subsidizing uh, the production of ethanol and also lower taxes as well so 
These are what the government is doing to try to promote ethanol production in Australia. So the government is quite supportive, and that's another advantage, another prospect for the biofuel and ethanol fuel industry in Australia. And obviously the big one is that it's renewable and it's cleaner. So renewable means we can it's sustainable. We can um, plan to have it for many, many years. And it's cleaner as well. So that means less CO2 emissions. And obviously with global warming, CO2 emissions are a big concern. So it still has some CO2 emissions, but overall it has less so these were some of the obstacles, some of the prospects. And if we have to evaluate the success at the moment, at the moment we have had some usage of ethanol in Australia, but overall it's still quite low. But we do see that prospect of you know, new technologies coming around um, that could really change the production of ethanol in the future. But if these technologies are not around, if things don't change, then ethanol probably will not be used to a higher degree in Australia because of these obstacles that we mentioned earlier, such as land use that could be used for food crops, water usage that could be used for food crops instead of ethanol crops. You have that 10% ethanol cap and the cost as well, so it costs more. Some of the prospects were that we could find an alternative source of ethanol, such as wood waste, weeds, and food waste. We could plant crops that benefit the environment, such as a tree I mentioned earlier. We could have, we have government support at the moment, which means more funding for uh, the industry. And it's a renewable and cleaner source, so it's more sustainable and has less CO2 emissions. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.